Well, hello, my delightful little ghouls. I'm Taylor, your casual crypt keeper, and welcome back to Top 5 Scary. You know I've already got something for you. Take a look through the peephole of the door of Scary, but trust me, don't look too long. Because today, we are taking a look at the top five terrifying things seen through a hotel room peephole. Now, if you've got a personal story of your own about something scary that happened in a peephole, by all means, don't keep that to yourself. Please tell us below in the comments. Maybe it'll even be in a part two video. Now let's get right into it. Number 5. The Stranger in My Hotel It was April of 2008. I was 20 and living in Denver for a year long work contract with a nonprofit up in Boulder. My girlfriend who's now my wife and my best friend Tim drove to Colorado from our home state to visit me for my 21st birthday. The nonprofit I was working for housed workers in dorm rooms but drinking was not allowed on site nor were visitors allowed to stay overnight. So I booked a hotel in downtown Denver for the weekend where we could drink in honor of my 21st. The hotel was big. Big, very nice and in a safe part of the city. So nice, in fact, it was the same hotel that most politicians stayed at in the DNC convention of 08. Now, my wife and Tim arrived Saturday morning and we all met up at the hotel and the day was fantastic. We spent the day across the city and by 1 a.m. we got back to the hotel. The room was typical. Bed one was close to a big window looking out across the city. Bed two was pushed against the wall with a door that opened to the bathroom. You couldn't see the door entryway to our room unless you were at the foot of the first bed. We sat and chatted in the room until about 4 a.m. My wife was laying at the head of the second bed flipping through the TV. And Tim and I were seated at the foot of the bed staring out the window as we talked. As we talked, I heard some movement and the sound of a door opening. Without looking away from the window, I assumed it was just my wife getting up to use the bathroom. But a few few minutes passed by and I thought I heard movement again. So finally, I turned around to look. I saw my wife still lounging in the bed as she had been. Did you not get up a few minutes ago to use the bathroom? No, she replied. It was then that I started to run cold. Very softly I heard Tim say, I think there's someone in our room. I lurched forward from the foot of the bed to look out into the pitch black entryway. I could barely make it out and I wanted to believe I wasn't seeing it, but there was a man dressed in all black with a black baseball cap pressed down into the 90 degree corner of the entryway where the room door and the wall met. Tim got the courage to meekly speak in the direction of the entryway and said, Hey man, is there something we can help you out with? Another period of silence that felt like an eternity went by. He slumped off the edge of the wall into, a, into the light and made eye contact with us. We just stared. Then eventually he spoke up and said, Is this room 1709? No man, it's not, Tim said nervously. He stared at us for a while longer and then he turned around and left. We erupted into a million curse words. I called the front desk. He was taken into police custody. A while later, they told my wife he disappeared and they had no idea who he was or what he was even doing. They told her there wasn't even a room 1709 in the hotel. We got all sorts of stories. We have no idea what that was about or how he managed to get into the room. It was the most terrifying moment of my life. We got the stay refunded and about $200 in credit for food. We should have sued, but hey, we were young and dumb. And honestly, it sounds like they were just happy to get out of there. That's gotta be one of the creepiest hotel stories I've ever heard. But if you want hotel stories even creepier than that, well, I got four more coming, but I got loads and loads and loads already on the channel ready for you to check out. If you can think it up, we've done two or three videos on it. So click subscribe, make sure you ring that little bell so you don't miss any one of our scary videos. But hey, do that once you see credits on this one, okay? Because I got more scary stories coming for you right now. Number four, can someone see you looking through the peephole? Recently, I stayed at a hotel that I suspected was haunted. I had an eerie feeling from the moment we arrived. I stayed in my own room and relatives stayed in other rooms on the same floor. We arrived late so no one was around. Bars and gift shops had closed for the night. In the restaurants, chairs were stacked upside down on tabletop next to a sign in the window that read closed. All the hallways were long and empty. Within an hour or two after I'd settled in and unpacked, I heard a strange creaking sound from the hallway. I paused, then tiptoed over to the door and peeked through the peephole. A man stood in the hall, slightly to my left, a short distance from my door. His back was turned when I first saw him, but within moments of spotting him in the hall, he abruptly spun and looked me dead in the eye. Stunned, I jumped back and held my breath, afraid that maybe he would hear me. How could he have seen me? It was after midnight on a Monday, and he was just standing there wearing a black tuxedo. He looked out of place. 
It alarmed me that he seemed aware of my presence, as though he could sense me there, peering at him through the door. But the odd thing is, there were several other doors along that hallway. Mine was simply just one door. What made him look straight at mine? I was quiet, my lights weren't even on, aside from a dim lamp in the corner of the room. What shocked me most was how he spun around and looked straight at me, locking eyes with me. Somehow, he seemed to know I was there. He began to pace back and forth outside my door, only my door. I sat motionless in horror as I watched, his footsteps forming shadows back and forth, back and forth, and this went on for a while. So how did he know I was looking, and, and moreover, how did he know which exact door among such a, a long hallway of doors that I had been standing behind? Number 3. Why were they knocking? I just randomly remembered thought about this for the first time and I thought it would be fitting. For context, the apartments I lived in at the time had 8 units. There were 2 buildings with 4 units each, the bottom ones you had to walk down about 6 steps. They weren't ground level, and the upper ones you had to walk up about 6 stairs, also not ground level. The 2 buildings faced each other with a sidewalk pathway and a little courtyard in between the 2 buildings. All 8 units living room windows faced the courtyard area. I lived in one of these upper units. It was also at the end of a residential street, so not a ton of people coming through. This happened in November 2013. I had literally just brought my son home from the hospital. And needless to say, I was a nervous wreck. The second night that I had him home, I hear a knock at my door around 11pm. I looked through the peephole and there was a woman standing at my door and I know she wasn't one of my neighbors. No way in hell was I answering because I had my newborn. <clears throat> My 4 year old daughter and their dad who is not a tough guy let's be real, she knocked for about 5 minutes and stopped. I went and checked the peephole and she was gone. For whatever reason I looked through the blinds and this lady was standing in the courtyard just staring up at my window. Evidently she saw me because she came back to the door and started knocking again. At this point my baby daddy suggested maybe her car was stuck or she was stranded but it didn't end there. The next night around the same time I heard another knock at the door but this one was hard like a cop. I went and checked and the peephole was covered. The person took his hand off the peephole, his head was down so I couldn't see his face but he pounded on the door again again and covered the peephole. My baby daddy thought that maybe one of the neighbors friends was messing with them and got the wrong apartment but I was creeped out and I did not answer that door. I wish I had a better ending to this story but nothing ever came of it. I still think about it a lot though. I wonder if it was a coincidence or if it was something sinister. Number 2. We stayed inside too. I guess it's an old habit from when I was younger. Curiosity, watching, looking. I moved into my condo last year. It's a 7 story building and I live on floor 6 in the middle of a long hallway. I, I guess maybe I was hoping to see the hot woman that lives in 604 or maybe the kinda hot or maybe the kinda hot married woman who lives in 615 with her husband who I think is a cab driver. Oh, <laughs> OP, you card. <laughs> maybe I'd see the old Asian guy that lives in 600 who walks his cat up and down the halls on a leash. Aside, he sounds like my favorite neighbor you have. I just got used to jumping up from the couch and running to the peephole in the door whenever I heard anything moving. Keys, plastic bags, look, I, I don't know, I just like looking like a cat. <laughs> Me too, I like to look. I heard them first long before I saw them. What sounded like wet branches being snapped. Of course I rushed over to look out but I didn't see anyone. After a few minutes I'd quietly open the door and peek my head out and scan the hall in both directions but nothing was there. A few days later it would happen again and again and again and again and again and again. But it was the last month that I saw something. I call them shifters because that's the best way I can describe them. I've heard the noise again and looked out of my peephole like I always do but this time I saw it. This thing with a vaguely humanoid shape wrapped in this dirty grey cloth that seemed to flow around it like it was underwater. It was walking past not so much as moving from one point to the next but like a camera playing at 4 frames per second. Like watching someone in a strobe light without the flashing light. And that noise, shattered bones sliding inside dry paper skin. It just moved on past that day. And once you see one it's like a floodgate. I started seeing these things regularly. First a couple times a day, sometimes they'll just have sound, sometimes it's just the smell of meat and sulfur. And they don't always look the same, sometimes they'll be dark grey, black, bluish purple. I saw a, a, a man wearing, it looked like yellow but it was a yellow that had all the life sucked out of it. But they all move the same, just shifting from one point to the next. 
Over the past week they've been congregating outside my door. I always see at least two or three just standing and waiting. After I looked out one day into a dead milky eye surrounded by melted flesh looking back at me, I haven't tried to go back out. I tried to call for police but my phone is dead. I can feel something in this apartment hateful and terrible. There's something evil in here but I'm not leaving because I'm too scared of the shifters outside. I looked outside just now and there's a woman with half her head missing holding up a battered sign. It reads, we stayed inside too. <laughs> Anybody else need like a, I don't know, a little drink, <laughs> a break? That one put my hair on end. All right, and that's not even number one. Number one, tiny handprints. This happened to me just recently, only two nights ago. I was walking my dog around the block, as I do. It's somewhat peaceful to be the only person out at night, and hey, my dog loves it. Anyways, I was almost back home when I hear a loud bang from near my house. My dog puts her tail between her legs and tries to drag the way we came. I figured she was spooked, so I attempted to comfort her. No luck. She was tugging so hard she was choking. So I picked her up and began to carry her home. Yeah, she's pretty heavy, so this was easier said than done. As we approached home, she started to calm down, so I let her get back on her feet. I notice the sound of a car coming from behind us, and I look over my shoulder to see a black sedan with tinted windows slowly approaching me. It wasn't terribly normal to see a car out this laced, so I hastened up a bit. When we got close to home, I started sprinting. I ran inside, I locked the door, I hid behind the couch. I crept over to the door, but I didn't hear anything. I looked through the peephole, took a little peep. What I saw made my legs collapse. A eye with an iris as black as night. The veins were like black lightning spreading across the entire sclera, tainting it red. My porch light was on so I could make out these dark streaks running down his cheeks. I fell to my hands and I cried out. I pulled myself up and hobbled as fast as I could to a telephone and I dialed 911 as fast as I could. Beep, 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 beep. Something was tapping on these windows. Let me in, mister. They're coming after me. It was a voice, but a child's voice. I slid out from under the bed. It felt wrong. This thing was silent once more, but the tapping kept going. It was almost hypnotic. Tap, 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 tap. I dozed off, but before I fell asleep, I heard the faint sound of a child's laughter. The policeman had never arrived when I woke up. I figured it was all a dream. I started making coffee. I looked out the window, but in the bottom right hand corner of the window, there were small red handprints. Very small red handprints. And that's about all she wrote for this one, my ghouls and goblins. Honestly, for the best, I don't think my little ticker could take any more of that. Creep on, creeping on now, and I'll see you in the next one, okay? Take it easy.